Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're focusing on a topic that tells you more about your digestive efficiency than frequency or volume ever could. The ghost poop. We'll explore what it is, why it matters, and how you can achieve it consistently. Thanks, Ethan. A ghost poop is a bowel movement that sinks in the toilet, passes smoothly, and leaves virtually no residue on the paper. When wiping is minimal or unnecessary, it signals that digestion, nutrient absorption, and microbial balance are working together without excess mucus, inflammation, or undigested fat. That raises an important point. Many listeners might assume such an experience is rare or even abnormal. How would you frame its significance for daily gut health? It's actually a benchmark of optimal digestion. Ghost poops align with type 4 on the Bristol stool chart. Smooth, sausage-shaped, and easy to pass. When food is broken down fully, especially fats, stool density is ideal, and it exits without straining. Reduced wiping lowers irritation, fissures, and hemorrhoid risk. Frequency discussions often overshadow stool quality. Could you explain why form and clean passage are more revealing than simply counting trips to the bathroom? Quality reflects the entire digestive cascade. Enzyme activity, bile flow, microbial fermentation, nervous system tone, and colon motility all influence shape and sinkability. A once-a-day ghost poop often indicates better absorption and energy production than multiple sticky evacuations that leave residue. Listeners also notice floating or greasy stools. What does that contrast tell us? Floating typically means fat isn't emulsified or absorbed. Fat is less dense than water, so undigested fat rises. Sticky residue hints at inflammation, excess mucus, or microbial imbalance. Both patterns suggest bile insufficiency or an overwhelmed intestine, whereas a ghost poop shows that fats and carbohydrates were processed correctly. Lifestyle choices clearly play a role. Let's start with movement. How does daily activity affect bowel quality? Physical activity promotes peristalsis, the coordinated contractions that move contents along the gut. Even a brisk 20-minute walk improves vagal tone and stimulates intestinal waves. Over time, consistent low-impact movement leads to smoother transit and more reliable ghost poops, even without major dietary shifts. Sleep and stress are often overlooked. What happens to digestion when those pillars crumble? Poor sleep elevates cortisol and disrupts the gut-brain axis. Stress tightens intestinal muscles, slows motility, and alters microbiome composition. The result is inconsistent stool, bloating, and incomplete evacuation. Restorative sleep and stress reduction practices, such as controlled breathing, help restore rhythmic contractions essential for clean passage. Diet guidance can feel contradictory. The article challenges the assumption that more fiber automatically solves irregularity. Why might increasing digestible carbohydrates be more effective during gut repair? Fiber is valuable once the lining is healthy, but in a damaged gut, it can ferment excessively and aggravate symptoms. Digestible carbohydrates, about 200 to 350 grams daily from sources like white rice and ripe fruit, supply glucose that fuels intestinal cells. Adequate cellular energy tightens junctions, reduces permeability, and supports balanced microbes. White rice seems counterintuitive to some. What makes it a strategic starting point? White rice is low residue, hypoallergenic, and easy to hydrolyze. It raises blood glucose gradually when combined with protein and fat, giving enterocytes reliable fuel without the abrasive bran found in whole grains. That simplicity allows the gut to heal rather than fight rough fiber. The article also mentions dextrose water for severely compromised digestion. How should someone implement that safely? Combine pure dextrose powder with filtered water and sip throughout the day for one to two weeks. It delivers immediate cellular energy without requiring enzymatic breakdown. After initial relief from bloating or pain, transition to fruit and rice while monitoring symptoms. It's a short-term bridge, not a permanent plan. Hydration sounds basic, yet dehydration remains common. What practical markers should listeners follow? Aim for consistently pale yellow urine. 
drink pure water in spaced intervals rather than large boluses. Total volume varies with temperature and activity, but thirst and urine color are reliable guides. Adequate hydration softens stool, supporting the smooth glide associated with ghost poops. Posture on the toilet rarely comes up in routine checkups. How can simple adjustments improve elimination? Sitting with knees above hip level straightens the anorectal angle. A footstool, leaning forward with elbows on knees, or crossing one ankle over the opposite thigh, all mimic a squat. This alignment reduces straining, facilitates complete evacuation, and supports the clean wipe-free result we're discussing. Suppose someone consistently sees floating or sticky stool. Beyond dietary tweaks, what tests or steps can help identify fat absorption issues? Assess bile flow and pancreatic enzymes. A stool fat test or a lastase measurement can confirm malabsorption. Supporting bile with bitters, choline-rich foods, or ox bile supplements under professional guidance often restores fat digestion. When fat is absorbed, stools sink and residue disappears. Let's consolidate actionable steps. What core practices move most people toward regular ghost poops? First, adopt easy-to-digest carbs, white rice, cooked root vegetables, whole ripe fruit. Second, walk or perform gentle exercise daily. Third, prioritize seven to nine hours of quality sleep and practice stress management. Fourth, hydrate to maintain pale urine. Finally, use toilet posture that relaxes rather than constricts the rectum. Listeners frequently ask whether fiber supplements are necessary once symptoms subside. How would you answer? Reintroduce fiber gradually and from whole foods, oats, beans, lightly cooked vegetables, after ghost poops are consistent. If tolerance remains, fiber supports microbiota diversity. If symptoms return, pull back and reassess. Supplements can be helpful but are secondary to whole food sources and proper digestion. Another concern involves carbohydrate amounts. People fear blood sugar spikes. How can they balance the need for carbs with metabolic goals? Pair carbs with protein and healthy fat to moderate glucose curves, distribute intake across meals, and choose potassium-rich fruits and cooked starches over refined snacks. Monitor energy and mood. When digestion is efficient, blood sugar regulation often improves, reducing cravings and maintaining stable insulin response. The hydration was clarified, but what about electrolytes? Do they influence stool quality? Yes. Sodium, potassium, and chloride regulate water movement in the colon. Low electrolyte intake can lead to hard, dry stools. Natural sources, sea salt, coconut water, mineral-rich vegetables, help maintain fluid balance, softening stool without overhydrating. Before we wrap, can you address the misconception that more frequent bowel movements always equal better health? Frequency matters less than completeness and comfort. Three ghost poops per week can outperform daily sticky stools in terms of microbial balance and nutrient status. The defining factors are effortless passage, sinking stool, and minimal cleanup, not sheer count. Let's conclude with a concise checklist for our audience. Evaluate stool form and sinkability regularly. Fuel your gut with digestible carbs. Walk daily. Sleep well. Manage stress. Hydrate wisely. Use squat supportive posture. Address fat absorption issues if stools float. Follow these steps, and ghost poops become a realistic marker of digestive resilience. That's clear and actionable. We hope today's discussion helps you translate bowel observations into practical steps for better health. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll explore mitochondrial strategies for energy optimization. Until then, keep listening, keep learning, and take charge of your cellular wisdom. Thank you for joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Apply what you've learned, observe your progress, and we'll be back soon with more evidence-based insights to support your journey toward optimal well-being. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.